could dysfunction of the vagus nerve be able to explain all of the problems we are seeing in relation to spike related injuries that's a question we're going to at least attempt to begin to answer today based on a very cool publication that looked at how often the vagus nerve is affected in COVID-19 patients and what does it mean and why vagus nerve as well my name is Dr. Mikola Rashik of Murray Genomics. Let's get going. I've been hearing about the vagus nerve now for a while. The, the suggestion that vagus nerve could be one central at explaining many of the issues related to COVID-19. That's been proposed already multiple times. It has to do with the fact that historically, and this is all new knowledge for me, because I didn't have much background at all in this, is that vagus nerve is frequently affected by pathogenic infections or invasions and also frequently infected in many diseases, human diseases as well. So there is this potential link. And basically many of the symptoms could be, could be related to this. Now, the first clue to this was the fact that many of the COVID-19 patients had a symptom called dysautonomia. Now, what is this autonomia? This autonomia is basically disorders of the autonomous nervous system, which is the type of your nervous system that is responsible for, um, it's responsible for the type of functions in your body that regulate involuntary functions. So we're talking about, imagine breathing, a heart rate, and, and even the working of your digestion tract. So, as a consequence, obviously, if COVID-19 patients were exhibiting this autonomia, vagus nerve is the biggest component of the autonomous nervous system. It's one of the ones that regulates a lot of it. It's the biggest nerve in our body and it innervates many of the organs, such as heart, lungs, digestive tract, your mouth and many, many organs. But what's also further interesting is that this nerve is also directly linked in controlling the immune system as well. And therefore it can regulate inflammation, including the, the organs it innervates, such as lungs and heart. So this regulation of the function of this nerve could lead to increased inflammation in general and as well as at the organs that it controls. And clearly we've heard about problems with cytokine storm and inflammation in the lungs or inflammation of the heart, example, myocarditis, right? So, and, and other organs as well. So the authors of, of this publication who were from Hamburg, Germany, they wanted to answer a question to see how often, let's see how well I do with stairs. Outdoors, no problem, can I handle stairs? <laughs> so these authors wanted to see, well, how often is this nerve affected in COVID-19 patients? And I, I don't know if I just mentioned this, they, they're, they were from Hamburg, Germany. And um, they did a couple things. They they looked at, um, at biopsies of obviously cadavers and determined COVID people who died from COVID-19. And they wanted to see what's happening to the vagus nerve when you're looking at it under the microscope and they were studying this molecularly. And they also looked at how often are symptoms of dysfunctional vagus nerve observed in patients that were being uh, screened through their clinics that they were working at. And this was from start of 2020 till uh, latter half of 2022. And basically, and they, the way they did check for the vagus nerve function was through how people were breathing, what were the breathing rate. So we're going to get back to this. So first let's talk about when they were looking at what they do at, at the biopsies. So 
the biopsies revealed, they actually, what they did is they looked at mRNA, what kind of mRNAs were being present inside the vagus nerve cells. So uh, I think obviously by now, everyone has heard of the word mRNA in association of, with the vaccines, but I think a lot of people don't actually really understand what mRNAs do. And you can think of mRNAs inside cells, all, practically all cells will have them. And uh, not all cells are capable of producing them. All cells that have nucleus will produce mRNAs because mRNA is the language between the nucleus, which is like the brain of the cell, to what the cell has to do. And mRNAs are like blueprints or templates to produce proteins. And then proteins, you can think of proteins as molecular robots that basically, the molecular robots that basically do all the work inside cells. So you can see the, the nucleus dictates what the cell does through what mRNAs are pumped out out of the nucleus. Those mRNAs that are pumped out out of nucleus will determine what the cell ends up doing. And, what, and this is how cell can respond to the outside environment by shifting what mRNAs are present in the cell. So when we introduce mRNA vaccines, all we were doing is fooling cells that took up the vaccine into taking another mRNA to start pumping out another tiny little robot. In this case, the robot was the spike protein, right? The cell was not any wiser where that mRNA came from. And it thought it was its own because it was already inside, okay? So that's how you, that mRNA technology, which is used in humans for the first time as a form of vaccine, but rather it's actually a gene therapy. And this is, this is basically how mRNA works. So when you look at what kind of mRNAs are inside a cell, this is how you get to find out what the cell does at that given moment in time. So they looked at those vagus nerves and, and what they were able to see is that the cells, what mRNAs they were pumping out is that they were signaling to inflammation happening. What does that mean? They were basically producing specific signals that alerted the cell, hey, we're fighting viral infection. Those signaling was a lot of its antiviral genes were being activated as well as the interferon pathway was activated. Interferon is one of those molecules that are as big in fighting infections and, and it's one of the crucial ones in the initial stages of fighting and viral infections. So it's one of the most important ones, one of the immediate ones. Now, so clearly this suggested that this, the ner these nerve cells were inflamed. But they also looked at these biopsies under the microscope to see, and they, with staining, basically they used specific antibodies that were recognizing specific proteins that were, that were only on the surface of specific immune cells. And this allowed them to see where these immune cells present inside the innervate or basically around around the vagus nerve and basically what they're finding is that there were mostly a lot of monocytes immune cells coming to the vagus nerve as well as some t-cells and that's also a hallmark of inflammation you normally want this to happen but it cannot be overdone and if it's overdone it can be dangerous you can literally accidentally the body can end up attacking itself if it's overdone. Um, so, so clearly they were confirming that, that, um, that um, these biopsies of, I believe it was 27 patients or cadavers. And um, I, th I think majority of them were showing this. Okay, so that's basically what they're were, what they were doing. But they also did another very cool thing. I think they took 20, 23 biopsy samples and they looked for the 
the virus genetic footprint itself. So they were looking, hey, can we find the virus genetics inside the actual vagus nerve cell? And they confirmed yes, every single, every single sample they studied, I think they, they looked at maybe something like 23, all of them were, they were able to confirm that the virus genetic information, the RNA was present in there. Uh, what was also interesting, so clearly demonstrating that the virus can gain entry directly into the, into the nerve cell. What does that mean? There's obviously some implications to that. It just also means that this is one of the ways, and the authors pointed that out, how the virus could actually gain entry directly to our brain because the vagus nerve eventually goes to our brainstem. And they were able to show that the R viral RNA was also found in proximity to where the vagus nerve enters the brainstem. So clearly demonstrating the possibility that this is but highly legitimate possibility for how the actual virus might be getting inside our brain. So that was interesting. And what was further interesting is that of course, they measure the load, the amount of the virus genetic information, and that correlated with, so the, with the amount of dysfunction experienced by the cell. They were able to, they looked at those same cells where they actually saw, where they actually saw the virus genetic information, the virus in, infection footprint, and they looked at the mRNAs as well of those cells as well to see how those cells respond to that infection. And one of the responses was signals that the, basically the nerve was starting to fail in its function. So it, it was becoming dysfunctional. And the larger the amount of the virus, the greater the dysfunction of the, of the nerve cells that happen so that i think that was interesting to see that correlation but what was also very interesting is that they looked at those nerve cells and they were basically intact so while the vagus nerve cells cell might become dysfunctional it does not get destroyed it does not deteriorate at least in in their assessment. So the, the nerve is intact. It's just no longer working properly. And again, like I said, it's obviously this, the, the cell under, is undergoing state of inflammation. So very, very interesting finding. And again, this was, um, this was uh, as I mentioned, they saw that virus infection in all of the biopsy samples that they examined. All right, then let's finally move on to the last thing that they did. And that was screening, screening the incoming COVID-19 patients. They categorized them based on the severity of COVID-19. And what, um, and they, they, they determine how well the vagus nerve was functioning simply by looking at the respiratory rates, so basically how they're breathing. And the reason why is because vagus nerve is involved in the regulation of the respiratory rate and this function of the vagus nerve will lead to your respiratory rate to be affected. It will be disturbed. So you can literally, if it's not working properly, the respiratory rate will drop. You're not breathing as much. And you can also stimulate the nerve and the respiratory rate can increase. That's the interesting part as well. And, um, and they were able to see that basically the respiratory rate was affected in COVID-19 patients and the greater the severity of the disease the more it was affected. Uh, and those who recovered from COVID-19, their respiratory rate subsequently increased, but those who succumbed to the disease, theirs did not. And 
perturbance to the respiratory rate was basically their greatest predictor of mortality risk to by COVID-19. So yeah, super interesting. And why is it so interesting? Because number one, as I mentioned, there are ways of how vagus nerve can be stimulated. I'm not gonna obviously talk about this in this video. And, uh, and the reason why I, uh, I find this so interesting is because potentially vagus nerve could be explaining almost all the symptoms associated with COVID-19. And obviously one thing that I didn't mention, I mentioned cy cytokine storm, but another big one, I just did a huge series on clotting and how clotting is, is influencing, is influenced by the spike protein and how clotting, size of my, those microclots, abnormal clots observed in COVID-19 could be directly, directly cor correlated to different variants, right? And, and that explains so many symptoms as well. But here it is, the vagus nerve apparently can also regulate clotting in our blood by influencing function of thrombin. Thrombin is the molecule that activates clotting. And um, very briefly, I think the immune system might be involved in that one, but I don't have enough background yet to really confirm that. Um, it's just from quick, quick reading right now of what I understand. But literally, you can see basically how microbiome could be affected because of the innervation of the gut by the vagus nerve and how people might be observing gastrointestinal problems. Obviously, this explains how brain could be uh, impacted as well. And a lot of the neuro, the neuro condition, conditions we're seeing with, with a lot of the long COVID, heart, right? It's just so many, so many symptoms could potentially be explained simply by the fact that vagus nerve is affected and these authors were showing how frequently it is um, affected. That's not the only study. This is just one of the frequent, um, sorry, recent studies that I found that I wanted to simply tell you about. Um, just because, uh, and it, it, they, I've studied other papers and I'll discuss them as well in the future. It, this story gets super interesting as well. I'll explain in future videos how the immune system is linked and how the inflammation could be linked, how the spike protein is related to all of this and why does the spike protein potentially affect the nerve in the first place. And uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll pause right now and uh, I look forward to bringing you more content specifically on this vagus nerve because it's such an interesting story emerging right right now for me i find it interesting and the fact that it's also linked to so many other common human problems and uh, or infections and i'll talk about that uh, as well uh, yeah you'll be surprised all right thank you everyone for your support and please share this video because that's how we grow and um, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click that notification button it's always fun to interact with you live when the premieres goes goes on and thanks for all the comments keep dropping them i i always jump on a little bit here and there to answer some check out our patreon account as well oh, that's how you can support us as well as Substack account okay bye everyone ciao for now